Thank you for tuning in to this video of ureteral identification during a robotic low anterior resection. My name is Val Simianu. I'm a colon and rectal surgeon at Virginia Mason Medical Center in Seattle. I'd like to thank Celine Soriano, one of our residents, for helping put this presentation together with me. I have two relevant disclosures for this video. I use and teach robotics and have received support from Intuitive to travel and bring trainees to training courses and I review surgical videos for CSATS, a local Seattle startup. The objectives of this video are to review the course of the intra-abdominal and pelvic ureter as it pertains to a left-sided resection. We will focus on high-risk locations and situations where ureteral injury can occur and discuss maneuvers to prevent injury during these cases. The left abdominal ureter begins at the renal pelvis, posterior to the renal vein and renal artery. It continues caudally along the psoas muscle and passes posterior to the gonadal vessels in close proximity to the IMA where it is vulnerable to injury during left colon resections, in particular during the medial to lateral mobilization. The ureter then crosses the pelvic brim anterior to the bifurcation of the common iliac vessels and then descends into the pelvis. The ureter's course in the abdomen is identical in both men and women the most consistent place located is where it crosses the iliac vessels. The pelvic ureter begins after it passes anterior to the internal iliac artery and travels along the pelvic sidewall. In the female pelvis, this follows a medial direction at the base of the broad ligament and over the uterine artery, entering obliquely into the urinary bladder. In the male pelvis, the ureter travels medially posterior to the ductus deferens above the seminal vesicles before entering the urinary bladder. During pelvic dissection, the ureter is vulnerable to injury during the peritoneal division and lateral mobilization of the mesorectum. This video will focus primarily on the abdominal ureter identification. The patient is a 51-year-old woman who had an incompletely resected polyp on screening colonoscopy, which was found to have invasive adenocarcinoma. She had standard staging workup and no additional lesions were found. On this sagittal view, you can appreciate the clips at approximately the rectosigmoid junction. The plan was for a robotic low anterior resection using the Da Vinci XI platform. Our port placement is shown here, four robotic ports in diagonal orientation, a 12 millimeter port in the right lower quadrant for stapling shown in dark blue, and an assist port in the right upper quadrant shown in green with a pre-planned fan and steel extraction site. To help with intraoperative identification, cystoscopy was performed at the start of the case with endocyanin green injected into each ureteral orifice. The total dose was 12.5 milligrams of ICG reconstituted in 5 ml of saline followed by a 5 ml saline flush. The patient is in Trendelenburg position with slight left side up. Exploration is carried out confirming no metastatic disease and visualizing the tattoo at the peritoneal reflection. The peritoneum is typically scored over the sacral promontory and it's important to visualize the right ureter at this time. In patients with low intra-abdominal adiposity, it can often be seen through the peritoneum as seen here, traveling medial to lateral and crossing the iliac vessels at the bifurcation. Medial to lateral dissection is then begun, and cephalide traction is placed on the sigmoid mesentery to allow the retroperitoneal tissues, including the hypogastric nerve plexus, to fall down. This allows us to identify the ureter in the retroperitoneum. The correct plane of dissection is at the top of the areolar attachments. Carrying the dissection in this plane further cephalad will allow the ureter to be safely traced near the IMA pedicle. Note the position of the ureter immediately below the gonadal vessels. The correct plane of dissection is between the gonadal vessels and the sigmoid mesentery. Another useful landmark includes the psoas muscle. The ureter runs on top of the psoas. If seen in the plane of dissection, then the surgeon is too deep. Both ureter and gonadal vessels are protected through this dissection. Once the ureter is dissected out, it is confirmed prior to the high ligation of the IMA performed here between multiple fires of the robotic vessel sealer. The ureter is again encountered during the lateral mobilization of the colon. 
The lateral attachments are taken down to meet our prior plane. Here, you can see an inadvertent defect in the mesentery of this very thin patient. The correct plane is re-established after appropriate medialization of the sigmoid mesentery. The ureter is encountered at an expected location where it crosses the iliac bifurcation. The ureter then courses into the pelvis, in this case demonstrated as it travels behind the round ligament and ovarian structures. If the posterior mesorectal dissection has been performed, then the peritoneum is easy to identify and safely divide away from the ureter at this location. Not all patients are skinny and have perfect anatomy. I wanted to show this example of an obese patient with a virgin abdomen whose case exhibits high intra-abdominal adiposity. After robot docking, the right ureter is buried due to thick layer of fatty tissue. Even after a thorough exploration, immunofluorescence is only faintly penetrating through the tissue, but we are able to identify the right ureter's course. Medial to lateral dissection is then performed, and more adiposity is encountered, making ureteral identification difficult. However, using the same principles as before with cephalat traction and dissecting at the top of the areolar tissue, the left ureter is identified and preserved before dividing the sigmoid vessels. Finally, after completing the medial dissection, we can see the ureter deep to the gonadal vessels coursing laterally into the pelvis as expected before beginning the presacral dissection. Finally, I wanted to show a patient with more extreme pathology where the ureter can be at particularly high risk and adjuncts such as stenting or immunofluorescence may be useful. This is a 76-year-old woman with smoldering diverticulitis and a colovaginal fistula. On her preoperative CT scan, you can see persistent inflammation at the site of a strictured prior colorectal anastomosis. As you can see, there is smoldering diverticulitis, a mesenteric abscess, and high intra-abdominal adiposity, making the usual anatomic landmark of sacral promontory, right iliac, and right ureter difficult to identify. Here, we use injected immunofluorescence, which shows us that the right ureter is much more medial than anticipated and guides the initiation of our dissection. Medial to lateral dissection can be difficult in these patients because of the bulk of the mesentery and colon, but with appropriate cephalate traction, the retroperitoneal tissues can often be dropped down and the ureter safely identified to guide dissection. Lateral mobilization can also be an issue, and in her case, the ureter is encountered behind dense adhesions to the sigmoid fossa. One approach in this situation is to mobilize more proximally to allow the course and trajectory of the ureter to be better identified. And often, this mobilization can safely navigate the adherent portion, maintaining the ureter safely, as is seen here at the bottom of the screen. In summary, this video reviewed the expected course of the left ureter during minimally invasive dissection of the colon. The important anatomic relationships reviewed here were the position deep to the gonadal vessels, anterior to the psoas muscle, and proximity to the IMA for the intra-abdominal ureter, as well as relationship to the iliac bifurcation, sigmoid fossa, and lateral course for the pelvic ureter. If the ureter is unable to be identified with standard anatomy, maneuvers that can be performed include switching to a lateral approach, dissecting away from the disordered anatomy, or adding adjuncts like fluorescent visualization or ureteral stenting. Thanks for watching.